We go down to the river And into the river we dive Oh, oh, down to the river we ride Then I got Mary praying And man, that was so she wrote And for my night in ballet I got a unicorn and a wedding coat We went down Hey there, guys. Me and a friend have just started a um, three-day trip. We're heading up the, the Wilkin River and the Makarara Valley here. As you can just see, just seen we saved ourselves 20 k's of walking by taking the jet boat up. So what we've done is taken the boat to Cairn Forks and then we'll head up Siberia and stay in Siberia Hut tonight. Then tomorrow head up to Crucible Lake, back down from there, up over Gillespie Pass, and then drop down into the Wilk, uh, not the Wilkin, drop down into the Young, and then walk out the, the Young on the third day. These valleys here, the Wilkin, the Young, the Blue, the Dingle, to me, you know, they're all the, the famous valleys and rivers that I used to read about when I was growing up, the halcyon days of the Otago herd. I've never been into any of those valleys so it's kind of cool to go into some of those valleys that you read about and kind of idolised. All the famous hunters from those halcyon years, the Herricks and Donald Bell and yeah, so that's good stuff. I've been told the deer numbers are very low in here, but I'm sure the Otago bloodlines are still here, even though numbers are low. Apparently there's a few chamois on the top, so get the monoculars out on tomorrow it'll be when we go over. Awesome! Just come out um, up and over from the Wilkin, and this is the uh, Siberia, bottom flats of the Siberia. That gully way up to the left there, left top left corner that swings round to the right under that high point. That's the gully that Gillespie's past track goes up. And the hut, Siberia hut, we're staying in tonight is on the bush edge in the shade there, bottom right. Yeah, real nice country. There's not an ounce of deer sign in the shingle in the riverbed. Not one print. I'd say numbers are pretty low. Maybe we'll find a chamois instead. These are the sorts of rock overhangs you want to find when you're tar hunting on a shitty day. That's perfect. That goes about six or seven meters back awesome dry spot never find those on the wet snowy shitty windy days when you're tar hunting i know that <laughs> Thank you. 
Morning guys. Just leaving Siberia Hut this morning to head up over Gillespie's Pass and down into the Young. I had a um, beautiful clear sky last night so I popped outside and got some night sky images. Managed to get the Milky Way and the hut in the one shot. And then when the moon came up there was this really cool eerie ground fog over the whole valley. Yeah, I got some cool images of a, a moonlit hillside with yeah this really weird ground fog lying out over the flats just uh, about there it was. Very cool. Look at this beautiful water. Magic. Nice big trout there, look at that. Eating flat out. Just makes you want to go fly fishing, that does. As my old mate Aaron would say, that's enough to put a horn on a jellyfish. Oh, look at that. Another big fish down there. That's a really big bugger, that one. It's hard case, isn't it, how certain scenes like that trout sort of stir emotions inside of you. You can just, the old imagination starts going. You can just imagine flicking a fly out there, a little number 16 dry or something, putting it just above him. Watching that big snout come out of the water. It's kind of the same when you see, um, you know, a good looking chamois country or a good set of tarry looking bluffs. The old, like I say, the old imagination starts going. You can just picture yourself up there sneaking in on a big bull or a chamois buck. Good stuff. I think, too, um, Talking about imagination and frame of mind. I reckon when you're out hunting and that, just just having that simple positive frame of mind is really good. Like, you know, you're out hunting or something, and if you've got that frame of mind where you're telling yourself, it's gonna be a good trip, we're gonna see some animals, we're gonna get chances, just keeping that whole positive frame of mind I reckon goes a long way it kind of changes the way you go about things if you're coming up to a, a new creek system or you're popping over a ridge you got that frame of mind where you positive outlook where you think you know we're gonna see something here yeah it changes the way you go about things and you tend to be a lot more careful and and the way you do it on top of that too just makes for a much more enjoyable trip yeah I reckon anyway I'm on a roll with this philosophizing trudging up this track thinking just harping back to that positive attitude staying you know happy if you like when it comes to a trip you know with a mate or two there's nothing worse than one or two of the members being in a bad mood it affects everyone and I just um, think of my old mate Aaron and I the trips we've done we get on really well our hunting philosophies are the same we enjoy the kind of the same things in the outdoors and get the same appreciation from it but every now and again you know one of us might I don't know get upset about something 
might be something another person did or just anything really and only takes that one little hiccup and just puts tension on tensions on edge and yeah it's, I think you know it's pretty um, vital to have that positive outlook bit of banter makes for a much more enjoyable trip now it's good to have mates that can give the banter but can also take the banter um, I reckon that's a key to a good trip is having mates that can that don't mind a bit of shit thrown at them and that can laugh at themselves most importantly enjoy it for what it is don't take things too seriously good it's good fun <laughs> I'm starting to sound a bit like the hunter philosopher Greg Kegel <laughs> that's a compliment Greg that's my friend's pack she's going up to Lake Crucible which is a lake up in that hanging basin there it's supposed to be really picturesque Oh, I decided not to go up there I'm going to shoot up Gillespie's Pass so I've got a few hours of glassing for some chamois without the pressure of another person pushing me along we'll see what we see some more stunning backcountry New Zealand real estate that's Mount Awful at the head of that gully up in the cloud there where I've come from down there Lake Crucible is in that far gully around the corner to the right there nice place no chamois yet I've just broken the bush line here so I'll um, sit down for at least half an hour and glass some of this prime country just picked up the first two chamois looks like two bucks chasing each other around just on that scrubby face behind the rocks in the foreground there there's one there they're like on flat knacker there's actually a, a wee mob of four animals there Unfortunately, this camera's only got a 10 power optical zoom, so it's in the middle of the screen there now. I need a better camera. Got a 69 Chevy with a 396. Fuely heads in a hearse on the floor. She's waiting. Outside of the 7-Eleven store We've um, just come over through Gillespie's Pass The top of the ridge was clagged in with fog but we're just starting to drop out of it now Some prime chamois country down here
That's uh, the young hut. As you can see, we got back after dark last night. All that basiny country I showed you early on. Didn't see one chamois in there. It's such a shame, all that beautiful, beautiful chamois country and just seemingly devoid of animals. Real shame. But anyway, off down to the Makarora now. I think it's about a 20 odd k's down there. Or if we can't cross the river where the young hits the Makarora, we'll have to go upstream to a bridge up there. I think that adds about another 4k. So hopefully the river's crossable down there. Tally ho! I took a leap of faith and now I wish this February never made its way into my life. It's my name on your papers. It's my Give you a, um, a quick panoramic of the Makarora River around the main valley now. I think it was uh, six and a half hours to come down the young, that's the young over there, 20 odd k's. I think it's a good trip, actually. Great country, real disappointing with the number of animals. I saw those four chamois in one group and one, one other set of prints coming down off the tops and that was it no deer sign on the riverbed none around the track it's always great great to um, get out in the back country even if you don't see animals it's way more to the back country than the animals awesome catch you next time Mr. When you're young